Online business for healthcare, what is happening you guys? I am so excited today to bring a live interview from someone who is in our community, who has been absolutely killing it with her own cash practice. And I, I did this yesterday, I posted about this and you guys went crazy over it. So I wanted to bring in the one and only Morgan Meese. Morgan, I'm gonna invite you on here, um, or if, if you're on here, you can just invite yourself. Morgan's gonna be coming on in just a second to talk about how she opened up her own cash practice just out of school, went from zero to 3K in four months with like no marketing. It's like, how do you do this? And so Morgan's putting on a free training tomorrow and I said, Morgan, you gotta let our people know about this. I'm such a fan of spreading abundance when it comes to learning from people who are doing things that are outside of the norm. Oh yeah, we got Morgan on here now. And I said, Morgan, we've gotta get you, we've gotta get you in here in our group because it's not something that we know how to help people do. I, I, our zone of expertise is the online world. We gotta have people who can come in and help y'all with, uh, with starting your own cash practice. And Morgan's been able to do it, and now she's helping other people do it too. And I said, Morgan, we gotta get you in this group. Morgan is coming on right now, love it. Let's see, who we got on here? By the way, if you, oh Morgan, let's see if we can get you again here. By the way, if you're coming on here live, I want you to just say live. If you're on the replay, say replay so that we can see you on here. Who we got? We got Julia, we got Anthony, Morgan, we got Rob, <laughs> we got Hamra, we got Amy, we got Juanita. Oh, I love it. You guys, it's so good to see you. Let me know if you can hear me all right. I'm not using headphones like I usually do on these lives, but we're flying by the seat of our pants today. Mike's <laughs> on here, good to see you, Mike. Morgan, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Love it. All right, Morgan, I want you to give us the lowdown on how in the world did you make this happen so fast? But first and foremost, just introduce yourself to us. Give us your backstory a little bit. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I feel like I have lived 20 years in the past year and a half since I left school. <laughs> um, but yeah, so where did I start? Um, well, I actually wanted to start before I actually got licensed a little bit of my background that I don't like typically share that much because it was like a little bit of a traumatic experience, but um, my last clinical was in a cash pay practice, like a solo practitioner cash pay practice, and um, it was an experience <laughs> to, to put it mildly, but um, so I worked with a PT and I loved the idea of cash pay. I love the idea of like direct patient care. Um, I love the idea of being in charge of like my schedule and my patient's schedule and just, you know, like not having to worry about anything to do with insurance because it was the worst. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, so I watched um, this practitioner he had been running his practice for a few years and I thought it was everything that I wanted to do. Like he wanted me to come work with him and like, I thought it was going to be my dream job. I thought it was going to be everything. It was going to be great. And that was just like, not the way that things shook out because like over the weeks in my clinical, I started to see like the way that he was not documenting anything, which is great. Um, his bookkeeping was papers all over the desk. <laughs> like, it was just like, not great. But then more importantly, like watching him like treat patients a certain way and the way that he treated me and another employee there, I was like, I can't, I can't be a part of this. So I'm going to figure out how to do it by myself. Yeah. Um, cause I can do it better. <laughs> um, but fast forward a little bit from there, I started working in outpatient um and quickly realized that like high volume outpatient was not for me like seeing 25 to 30 patients a day um i don't think that you can deliver quality care doing that <laughs> um and i moved into home health uh where it was really cool to have like the freedom and flexibility of like scheduling your own appointments and everything um but it just wasn't really the patient population I wanted to see. Um, and I had started doing CrossFit a couple years ago and at the gym uh, that we had been going to for the past year or so before like COVID and everything, yeah. um, they didn't have a physical therapist. So um, I was talking a little bit with my nutrition coach about like what I wanted to do. And she was like, hey, well, why don't I set up a meeting for you with uh, the gym owner and just, you know, pitch it to Billy and see if he wants to do this. So I was like, okay, we're, we're doing this. 
<laughs> um, so it was kind of just like a fly by the seat of my pants situation, but I had had it with outpatient. I had had it with home health and I was like, we have to make this work and we're going to figure out how to make it work because I love working with athletes. I love working one-on-one -on -one with people and I just want to have like the freedom to do whatever I want and whatever, um, you know, my patient and I decide is going to be the best for them, you know, and provide the best results, the best care and all that stuff. So in a nutshell, <laughs> that's been my past two years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I want to know for the people who are here listening right now, whether you're live or on the replay, I want to know if you've had an experience like that. I, I'm curious what your experience was that pushed you to want to be a business owner. Because I love your story, Morgan, with what you just said of, hey, I had an experience that really, it was, it was a really crappy experience that pushed you away from kind of the standard model of, of practice within, within healthcare, within physical therapy. I think that we all have those stories of, hey, I, I had this experience where I realized, man, there has to be a better way or something that just that was like the breaking point for you entrepreneurially. I would love to know for those of you who are here on the live stream right now or listening, I would love for you to just put a little snippet of what caused you to go into your entrepreneurial journey. What was it? Was it a professor? Was it seeing crappy care in another clinic? Was it seeing someone who was absolutely killing it in their own business? I would love to know what, what for you is the entrepreneurial spark? Because I think it's really interesting. If you look at Morgan, for you, like the, the idea to become an entrepreneur, to grow your own business was sparked out of, out of, out of something so negative that you saw, man, yeah. this, this kind of stinks, but you didn't just wallow in that and think, ah, oh, the world is terrible and I just have to live with that. You took action. And you went outside of, probably outside of your comfort zone in order to create a new reality for yourself. And I just think that's so admirable to be able to recognize when life isn't going how you want it to and be able to, to say, what can I do to change my circumstances actively? And you've done that. Yeah, yeah. And it was so scary. <laughs> like, um, I don't know if it's just me. So I mean, honestly, like, you guys tell me if any of you guys watching now or on the replay have felt this way, but um, like just going through school, I feel like you're just, you're told to like do like things a certain way. And, you know, you only have so much like autonomy over your career and in treating patients. And, you know, if you like step out of line, like you're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you can't, you know, you just, you can't go out and like have your own opinions and your own way of doing things. And so like to break that, uh, like mindset or like barrier that I had last year, and step out of line and color outside the lines. Um, oh my God. <laughs> like, oh, I was so sweaty the whole time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but like the more that I did it and the more that I put myself out there and just like asked for what I wanted, um, you know, the more you start to realize that it's okay. And like, nobody's like, nothing bad is going to happen. You know, you might get told no, but you know, everybody will support you in whatever you want to do. Um, that's been my experience so far. And it so just like cool. compounded on itself. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Jer uh, Neil mm -hmm. says, when I saw what the Cairo I used to work for was billing and collecting for manual therapy versus what he was paying me. That was the breaking point. Figured I could do the same thing on my, on my own. That was 10 years ago. And Neil, you never look back, brother. I know it. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so Morgan, we want, we want to hear now kind of tactically, how did you make this happen? How did you get patients early on if, it, if you weren't doing external marketing? You talked about, you know, you, you messaged me and say, yeah, I didn't have to do like traditional advertising to get my first patients. Tell us if someone's in that situation and they're thinking, I want to start a, a practice or maybe they have a practice already. Things have hit them hard with COVID and they're kind of resetting. What did you do in order to be able to get patient flow early on? Yeah, so um, I think one of the things that I did, which I can see this applying in like a, a few different areas, no matter like who you're working with, but um, like I mentioned earlier, like I reached out to my gym owner. I knew, you know, we had a gym of almost 200 people and they were all, you know, people in my target audience, uh, people I wanted to treat and I knew that I could help. And so this one person had access to all these people. So I reached out to him to see if we could work together. Um, and he said yes. And I worked out of that gym for about six months uh, now. But 
um, yeah, I just like, I reached out to somebody who had access to my target audience and asked if it would be okay for us to work together. Yeah. And, you know, when we came to that agreement, then I had, you know, permission to access that audience. And I started reaching out to people in the gym, which, you know, was pretty like easy because I was already going. <laughs> so right. like just talking to people after class and being like, Hey, this is a thing I'm doing. I'm happy to help. Um, and then, yeah, people just started approaching me there. Okay. So a couple, couple things there. Number one, you looked at who are the influencers that you can influence, right? You didn't say, how can I, cause you didn't have to like quote unquote build an audience there the traditional way. You didn't have to put out Facebook ads to do that. You went and found someone that you already had a relationship with who had a relationship with your ideal patients and you mm -hmm. simply asked them. Now I want a lot of people are like, wait, how do you, how do you approach that with someone and not have it be weird or salesy or hurt that relationship? So I want to know tactically, like what, what did you go say to the owner to be able to make that connection happen without it feeling slimy, without it feeling like you were trying to take advantage of, of the relationship that you had with the gym? Like, how did you approach that specific conversation? Yeah, so, um, I mean, honestly, I guess like my mindset going into it was just like, I felt like I could be a source of value and like an asset to the gym. And so when I presented my idea to him, I was just like, look, hey, you know, this is something that I really want to do. I want to start my own practice. And there's so many people with shoulder injuries here. Um, you know, so if I come in and I'm able to help them, um, you know, then you're going to be able to retain more gym members, um, you know, and you'll have more people coming to the classes. Um, and it just honestly would just be a win-win for both of us because we just want what's best for the health of all the members. Oh, I love that. Okay, guys, listen to what she just said. So she found someone who she already had a relationship with, that she already had trust built up with, and that she knew how to access to the people that she wanted to be able to help. And then she didn't say, hey, I would like to come in and, uh, and open up a business and just piggyback off your success and, uh, and, and just take for me, 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 right? Morgan found a way to be able to say, hey, I have something that I can help you with. It was a value add. And I love, Morgan, that you said, you know, I knew that, that I had something that could help them. How did you get that level of confidence? Because that, that mindset piece is so big. And I think that's something that holds so many people back early on where they think, oh, no, I, I don't want to go in and ask that because, oh, they, what, you know, what they, but no, you said, no, I had confidence. I knew that I could, I knew that I had something that I could help them with. How did you adopt that mindset early on? Um, good question. Um, cause I feel like personality wise, I'm just kind of like impulsive and kind of just like go for what I want to do. <laughs> um, uh, so I didn't really spend like too much time kind of like hemming and hawing about it. But, um, I think what one thing that did like help give me confidence was I did have like a couple of the members prior to my conversation with the gym owner ask me and be like, Hey Morgan, like you're a PT, right? Can you take a look at my shoulder. <laughs> um, so, you know, like, obviously I helped them. And then like that, I guess, like that experience and that like piece of action there gave me more confidence going into that conversation because I, I mean, I had literal proof that people there wanted me to help them. So I might as well just work out of the gym. Yeah. Now I'm curious, Morgan, in, in all honesty, have you ever had mm -hmm. a patient that you helped Maybe it was on a clinical rotation. Maybe it was one of the 25 to 30 patients you were seeing a day uh, that didn't get the results that they wanted. Like, honestly, have you ever worked with someone that you came out of that interaction not feeling 100% great about yourself as a clinician or feeling like, man, I, I didn't get the outcome that I wanted for them? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, so I want to ask them, why did you decide to, to instead? Like, why didn't you dwell on those situations and instead you focused on the time when people came and asked you about their shoulder and you helped them? You see, because you, know, you could have you easily said, well, oh, I had that one experience though where I helped someone, they didn't get better. Why not focus on that? Why decide to focus on the positive? How, how do you make that switch for yourself? These are some deep questions, Alex. I know, I know. so here's, okay, <laughs> go ahead and answer. And then I'm, I'm sorry, I'm kind of leading, I, if this, Question, but I'd love to know because I think it's so important yeah. for those just starting off. This mindset piece, this confidence piece is what killed mm -hmm. most people early on in their business. Yeah. And you have it. And I'm trying to pull out for you, it's natural, but I'm trying to pull mm -hmm. out why, how have you made this a natural habit for yourself? 
Sure. Um, so, and like, honestly, like it is a good question, even though these are thinkers for me, <laughs> um, because like in the past couple of days, I've had a few different conversations with PTs who are like, I would love to do this, but you know, I really need to, I need to wait a year. I need to wait five years. I need to get a bunch more clinical experience. I need to get five more certifications. I need to do 20,000 more hours of con ed, <laughs> like, you know, before I can even think about starting my own practice. And like, to me, <laughs> the impulsive one, I'm like, just do it. Like, you'll be fine. Um, but I think that like, just over and over and over again, you know, in the majority of the cases that I have seen clinically, most of the time, I am able to help the patient with at least something. You know, maybe they aren't 100% better, but I have made a positive impact on their life. You know, maybe their pain is from a 9 to a 3 out of 10, you know, yeah. which is like way better. Um, you know, or maybe they can go up and down the stairs now. Maybe they can do, you know, a snatch now without any issue. And like, I think just like my mindset goes to that where I'm like, okay, um, actually, like, this is something I worked on with a, a mental health therapist that I went to is focusing on like, facts versus feelings. Yeah. And so in times whenever I'm like, feeling a little bit less confident, or, you know, I've had patients recently where I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, what's gonna happen if I can't help them? That's a feeling for me. Um, but then I go back to the facts. And I'm like, okay, you know, in the past 10 ankle cases that you've seen, what have you done that has helped? What is like the likelihood that you are going to be able to help this person? The likelihood is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so we're going to focus on those facts and like logically, this is most likely going to work. So I don't know if that like answers your question. Oh, Hopefully so, so that well. helps. <laughs> I just see so much where, so, so y'all know that we coach lots and lots of people. Like we've coached hundreds of people at this point through our different programs in here in this group for free. Morgan is someone that we coach in the online business space. And I just see over and over that you're an action taker, Morgan. You're someone who says, let me go find the challenge and I will implement it. Like we had a call like two weeks ago and there was one specific thing that I was like, Morgan, this is the one thing that you have to do in order to have success in your business. He said, yeah, that's the one thing I don't want to do. And I challenged you and I said, okay, well, if you want to have a business, you have to do that thing. And then like a week later, you report back and you're like, oh, Alex, I did that thing. I really hated it. I didn't enjoy it, but I did it. It's like, oh, that's it. Like, that's it. Your <laughs> mindset is so, so key to the success that you've had. And that's something that we look for in business owners. Who are the business owners that have had success already early on that we can say, look, just some strategy and we can turn the fire on for you. You're that type of person where we just say, What's the strategy? Let's give you some guidance and you just take it and run. I think it's so important for people who are watching to realize that you always have the option of how you're interpreting your past, right? You always have the option and you have taken the choice to say, hey, I'm going to look at my past experiences with patients and find the positive ones to be able to fuel myself and fuel belief that I can go forward and help more. That's why I asked the question, right? Have you ever had a patient that didn't turn out perfect? Well, of course you have. Well, guess what? We have too. It happens sometimes where you can't help everyone 100%. But you, if you're listening right now, you always have the choice for what experiences you're anchoring to in order to make ex decisions about your future actions. Morgan, you've had just time and time again, I mean, you're not far out of school. You're really not. You said you're what, two years, almost two years out of school? Yeah, I graduated 2018. Yeah. A lot of people are saying, no, I've got to wait five years, three years to have any chance of starting a business and you're like screw that I'm just doing it I'm just doing it <laughs> and I love that relentlessness about you in just saying I'm going for it I'm going to make this work and uh, and that's just something I wish more people could have okay so we covered how you get relentless guys go back and listen to what she just talked about I think it's so key from a mindset perspective to be able to have that we call it imperfect action right the perfect action yeah. <laughs> perfect inaction and you embody that so well. So now I want to get into when people were coming to you at the gym, how did you, mm -hmm. act, what, what did that conversation look like? Were you waiting for them to come to you? Were you, you, you mentioned that you were talking to people after classes. What did those conversations actually look like when someone, when you knew like, oh, someone's, you know, someone's shoulder looks, looks like they're, they're stiff or something. Did you initiate it? Did you wait for them? And what did that conversation look like? Yeah, so I have done some reflecting on this stuff, like when I first started, and I'm 
kicking myself for not being like more active about it. <laughs> but I mean, like you learn as you go. Yeah. Um, but like most of the people were just like coming up to me. And so I, I mean, yeah, we could get into that, but, um, yeah, actually, how were... did you get people to come <laughs> up to you? That's amazing. I don't know. That's why, like, for the first, you know, like, probably three months or so, I really wasn't, like, doing anything actively to try to get patients. I was just, I mean, I was showing up consistently, like we talk about, you know, in a lot of ways. Um, and, uh, like, I was showing up to classes. I was talking to people after class, like, just having genuine conversations with people. Yeah. Um, and then when they would come up to me and ask for help, then I would just be like, you know, yeah, like, I, I've worked with a lot of people who have, like, your same shoulder issues. I'd love to help you more. So, like, let's schedule time and we can continue to talk about it. Love it. And were you selling packages to these people where it was, hey, you know, it's five visits and you come in and it's this price. Or were you selling... Uh, kind of one-off, uh, one-off appointments? Yeah, so um, I was selling, I started off trying to do packages, but I think that it kind of like scared people a little bit. So then I tried to do like one-offs instead, but then I just, I found that it was, I was getting more drop-offs, you know, like people would like, like schedule, but then they would cancel or keep rescheduling. And it wasn't really like working out too well for either of us. Yeah. So I ended up going back to packages. Um, and then uh, that just like that helped kind of like, it gave me authority for one, you know, like if I talked to somebody and I was like, look, this is going to take six sessions. You know, I typically sell this all up front, but if you need a payment option, we can do that. Um, and then if somebody bought into that package, uh, you know, then I knew that they were all in and I could depend on them to show up. And then it just, it works out a lot better for the patient as well. Ooh. Okay. So I want to dive into just a little bit more. You, you, you had mentioned that people were coming up to you. They were saying they were interested. Did you have people ultimately do like a free discovery visit? Did you have people go to, uh, to a paid onboarding look like for you oh no we lost morgan oh! morgan hopefully you'll come back uh let, let me re-invite you let's see oh shoot well while we're waiting here chance you said invite good to see you on here chance seamus you said invite morgan is putting on a whole training tomorrow with this stuff uh tomorrow i believe it's 5 p.m pacific time tomorrow you can just come and invite if you want to get an invite to it she's gone through and she started looking at what are all the different systems i had in my business what are how did i attract patients early on how did i start how did i create those packages uh, there we go she's she's coming back on and if you want an invite to be able to get access to this training it's an invite only training that she's doing just comment invite it's a free thing and uh and i saw i i peeked behind the scenes of what she's teaching and morgan really knows her stuff if you haven't noticed uh, she's she's like a go after it and make it happen kind of girl. You're gonna want to learn from her. So comment invite if you haven't yet. We'll get you the invite to uh, to her live training tomorrow. Okay, but Morgan, so I had asked you a question. Mm -hmm. that, uh, you probably didn't hear, which was how uh, how were you onboarding clients early on from like them talking to you to actually getting them to pay you? Were you doing free discovery visits? Were you offering a discount for an assessment? Was it an eval? Like what what did that look like? Yeah, so um, I started doing free consults and I kind of, I played it a little bit because I had like two different types of people who would come to me, like one person who would say like, hey, you know, I'm having some shoulder pain. Can you help me? I don't really know what PT is. I don't know, but like maybe. Um, so I would give them a free consult. Um, okay. And so we would either do that, like right after a workout class, I would sit down and talk to them, or we would schedule a time. Um, but then I also had people who were just like, sign me up, fix me up. <laughs> and so like with them, then I would just go ahead and schedule an eval for them. And then that eval process, is that where you would actually sell them their the package up front? Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say in like, 95% of my cases, that's typically what I've done is like, I'll, you know, sign them up for a paid evaluation. And then based on that evaluation, I'll say, you know, okay, you know, based on your situation and my past experience, I've seen like X number of sessions work best for this. This is what like the next six weeks will look like. 
um, you know, and then I typically sell packages and, and that's what I go about doing. Cool. And do you end up charging based off how many sessions you're going to do? And you just kind of have a number in the back of your mind in terms of, Hey, per session, this is what I want to do, but I kind of package it together. Do you, do you include discounts in that? Or do you just kind of have a straight number and you just sort of say, Hey, if it's four visits, it's going to be this. If it's six visits, it's going to be that. Yeah. Um, so I have, I've gone back and forth between doing like packages and then like monthly things. Um, cause I think like Josh Payne does like monthly memberships. Um, but I have found it like, at least for me doing like a session package where it's six sessions, um, that has worked out a lot better because then we can just like schedule them as needed. Yeah. Um, and like right now, for example, like a couple weeks ago, I sold a five session package and like sold all of it up front um and then usually again it's kind of like a thing where like I gauge it um you know based on like the reaction at like the total cost for the package yeah. but um you know like if if it feels right then I'll say okay it'll be you know the five sessions for x number of dollars and if you know you're up to purchasing that in full today I'll give you a 10 percent discount yeah um but yeah, some, some people don't care. They're like, okay, yeah. here's my credit card. <laughs> so I, I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have to answer this. Um, mm -hmm. You can say I'd rather not answer it. But I think it's really useful for people who are thinking about starting something on their own or who are maybe early into it to give them confidence. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me, like, what's, what's the range that you'll normally have for a package? Are we talking like $300? Are we talking $2,000? What's for you kind of a, a normal range? What do you feel like is... Uh, is something that values your time, but also honors what uh, what's, what someone is willing to pay and able to pay. Yeah, so I mean, that's definitely like a big like internal war <laughs> that I'll have with myself. Where I'm like, oh my gosh, like this sounds like so much money, but at the same time, like I know it'll work <laughs> and I know it'll benefit them. Um, so I I would say like just speaking like bluntly about money, what I know is that across the country, cash pay physical therapists on average are charging 150 for an hour session. And so like, that's again, like kind of another fact where I'm like, well, I know other people are charging this amount. So, you know, I feel comfortable doing that. And I also know what like my license bills for in an insurance based yeah. place. Um, so that's what I used to do. My current uh, rate is 175 for 90 minutes, um, just because I feel like my patients like need that amount of time. Um, and so far, it's it's been okay. And I feel like expanding like the time amount and not making it like 30, 45, or 60 minutes even like that can feel kind of rushed. So for me, it made me feel better to charge uh, 175 by expanding it to 90 minutes because I was like we can get so much done in 90 minutes, you know, like we can go over tons of educational stuff. Um, you know, we'll do like their physical therapy, rehab stuff. I can do a lifting assessment and we can really work on a lot of stuff. And so like for me, knowing that I'm packing that amount of value yeah. into that time block, I just like, at least now, you know, like eight, nine months later, I just, I don't really have any, you know, anything left to prevent me from saying that. And yeah. so if, you know, again, like for some reason, if money is an issue, um, then I'll work something out with the person or we can always spread out the visits as we need to. Um, but I mean, I've sold multiple packages now for $1,500. So it's possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, yeah. did you hear that? Morgan is less than two years out of school or about two years out of school, runs her own practice and is charging $1,500, up to $1,500 for, for packages. If you're just starting off, I just really want you to believe for yourself that this is possible for you, that it all hinges ultimately on what's going on up here. And if you want help with this, and then if you want help with the logistics of how do I actually set this stuff up? How do I do the marketing? What do I say when I talk to people? What does like legally, what do I need to be doing in my business? I want you to comment invite below. Morgan is doing a live training tomorrow. Can you tell what can you tell us about the training tomorrow, Morgan, that you're doing? Just give us a little a little primer of what's coming tomorrow. If people comment invite. Yeah, yeah. So it's um it's actually on Thursday, Thursday evening. Oh Thursday. Oh um, my goodness, I kept telling people I, I have been so off on my time, people. Have you <laughs> 
I don't know if you saw it, but when I first posted about this, guys, I said <laughs> that it was, it was at 1 Eastern and 11 Pacific, which, okay, ah, terrible. And then I'm telling everyone it's tomorrow. When I know it's Thursday, I clearly don't know that today is Tuesday. Okay, so it is Thursday. <laughs> and tell us, what is it that people are going to come there and learn? Yeah, so I am so excited for this, you guys. I love doing webinars <laughs> um, to begin with, but uh, what I am really going to focus in on because like I've just, I talked to so many people who are like, oh my God, I have no idea where to start. I have to wait 20 years before I can do anything. Um, I am trying to make it as simple as possible and like as lightweight as possible to start a practice and create a business entity for yourself. Um, so that like, you know, I, I've had people do it. I did it. I made myself a business entity in 30 days. Like it was, it was very quick and easy action taker. <laughs> um, so like, it's something that you can do and yes, there is an investment and in all that stuff and like building a business entity, but it's very available for you and it's not very complicated. So in the webinar, I'm trying to break down like the very first steps. I have it, I think in like three parts right now, the first three steps that you need to take where like, if you are ready to start a practice for yourself and <laughs> ready, if you want to start a practice for yourself, um, then you can do this. And I will tell you like all the logistics that you need to become a business entity. And obviously this might vary state to state and everything and do your due diligence on like researching it. But I will tell you what you need to research and what you need to check off on a list in order to become a practice. Um, and then the other two things that I think are really key are I'm going to go over some marketing strategies um, in order to, you know, put yourself out there, start talking about yourself, because I mean, that's like the number one thing I've had a lot of people tell me like, hey, like I have my practice, I haven't had any clients, but then they also haven't told anybody <laughs> that right. they're practicing. Uh, the, the so clients just start coming in as soon as you make the LLC, yeah. right? That's how, that's kind of how it works. The state does all the marketing for you. That's why you set up the <laughs> LLC. And then they just let everyone know in the area, hey, there's a, an amazing therapist who just opened the doors. And you should, that's, that's how I think it works. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. <laughs> I mean, that, that would be interesting. That would be an interesting world to live in. But um, yeah, so that's like the number one thing is like, I'm going over like different ways that you can put yourself out there and start telling people like, hey, if you have XYZ problems, I can help you. And this is how. Um, and then uh, just working on creating an offer, like something to put out there. So if somebody did come to you and say, you know, hey, Alex, can you help me? You would know exactly what to tell them. Ah, um, yeah, those are the, the three key things that I'm going to be going over in a lot of detail in the webinar. I love it. All right. So guys, comment invite below if you want to invite to that. Morgan, I'm going to task you with replying to the people who comment invite on here. You can send them the link to get registered. And uh, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for coming on here. My takeaways, and I want you, if you're watching this live or on the replay, I want you to put your biggest takeaway below. There's a far greater chance that they'll actually remember it and that this time that you've spent to watch this will be worthwhile to you if you write down what your takeaway is. You might as well write it down here right now before you forget. Uh, I, I want to know what your biggest takeaway was from this and I'll just tell you mine real quick, Morgan. Mine was you just have to, I, I love that you said, I just, I'm an action taker. I just go for what I want and that to me, I just, it epitomizes who you are to me, but also I think <laughs> epitomizes who we need to be as business owners. We need to identify what we want. We need to be able to go for it and have the confidence that like, hey, I'm good enough for this right now. I'm ready. Let's do it. I think there's so much uh, that, that that encapsulates that idea of I just go for what I want. So that was my big takeaway. Go for what you want. And, and then you drop some knowledge on marketing and creating offers and actually getting offers in front of people. But I would love to hear, Fernando says, make more offers. I love that, man. Uh, for anyone who wants the, the link to, to register for Thursday, comment, invite. And then I just have to say, finally, Morgan, I made it through an entire 30-minute period without calling you Megan. I think that there's <laughs> progress going on here. Uh, I agree. <laughs> maybe I need to check my mental status because I've been killing. I've been, I've been absolutely uh, just getting dominated by time zones, days, and names lately. Um, so Morgan, thank you for your patience with me. <laughs> thank you for coming on here. Y'all just say thank you to Morgan for, for taking the time to come and drop some knowledge and uh, comment invite and we'll get you on there tomorrow. Morgan, I'm so excited to see you on Thursday night. I'll be on there as well. 
<laughs> and uh, can't wait for the knowledge that you're about to drop there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate it. You got it. Go have a great rest of your day, guys. Go take action like Morgan does. Comment invite below if you want the invite, and we'll see you on there.